Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about wet sump versus dry sump oil systems and a huge thank you to Pennzoil for sponsoring this video. Now if you haven't yet checked out my video on how engine oil systems work, you may want to check that out before watching this uh, because it dives into much more detail about how the oil actually circulates around the engine and it could help with understanding these two different systems. That said, let's dive right into what are the differences between a wet sump, which we have here on the left, versus a dry sump, which we have here on the right. Now the biggest difference really is that the dry sump is going to add a few components in. So here on the left you can see the wet sump system. You've got your oil pan right here. You've got your uh, pickup tube right here which is going to be pulling in oil to the pump. It's, the pump's going to send that oil through a filter and then circulate it through the engine where it will then fall back down into your oil pan. Now on a dry sump system, what you'll have is a much shorter, much shallower oil pan right there. You'll have a pickup feed uh, right there down at the bottom, and you could have multiple of these in dry sump systems. That's going to go to that first pump just like in our original one. The difference is now it's going to send that oil into a reservoir. So you've got this tall cylindrical reservoir right here, which that oil accumulates in, uh, and then you've got a secondary pump, which then picks up from that secondary reservoir, sends that then through the filter, and then circulates through the engine. So why would you add in this reservoir uh, right here? Well, one of the reasons you do this is because you can use a shallower oil pan, as you can see right here. So because this reservoir is located externally somewhere else, uh, you don't have to have that deep, shallow, that deep oil pan in order to accumulate all that oil and use however much oil you have in your engine. So that's one benefit. This allows you to place the engine lower and then you're going to have a lower CG as a result of lowering that engine. It also gives you a fully flexible capacity for how much oil you want to have in the engine. So here you're restricted by the size of your oil pan. If you want a really large oil pan, you can do that, but then you're gonna get closer to the ground and you're gonna make sacrifices where here, externally you can locate it wherever you want and choose exactly how much oil you want. Now, if you use a large reservoir, this is ideal for racing applications because you have more uh, capacity oil and that means it's going to take longer for that oil to be saturated with heat which means you're going to have better cooling. So ideal uh, for track scenarios from a cooling perspective to have a larger oil capacity. It also allows you to re relocate the oil reservoir for weight balance. So if you need you know, a specific amount of weight located somewhere on the vehicle, you can do that by placing your oil reservoir there. It gives you some flexibility. Uh, and also probably one of the biggest benefits of a dry sump system is that the system won't run dry while you're cornering. So you can imagine here if you're taking this car around a really heavy corner, that oil could slosh up to the side here and then your pickup tube could have some air and then you're gonna have air go circulate through your engine. Now if you sustain that corner for long enough, that means your engine's going to be burning up because it's not going to have any oil lubricating it. Versus in this uh, oil, this dry sump system, you're going to have that oil come down, but you've got this oil reservoir that's ultimately feeding that engine with oil. So in a high G turn, you may have all the oil sloshing up here, but you've still got all this oil in your reservoir and you can have different uh, pickup feeds located throughout the engine if you'd like uh, to have further protection. But essentially what's gonna happen is it's gonna slosh up, you're gonna be able to use this reservoir for a good while. When that corner comes back down, then you're loading that oil back into the reservoir. And so you can sustain long high G corners with this without worrying about your engine losing lubrication. There's also a horsepower, small horsepower benefit of using a dry sump system where you're not gonna have this oil sloshing on the crankshaft, and so that's gonna be taking away power as that crankshaft sloshes through the oil if it indeed does do that. So here we have a few examples of some different vehicles which use either dry or wet sump. Wet sump is by far the most common. Most vehicles have this, and then more truck-friendly vehicles uh, may end up using dry sump. Ferrari 488 GTB, BMW M6 is some examples with dry, uh, some examples with wet, Dodge Charger S, SRT Hellcat and Mini Cooper S. Now what do all these companies have to do with Pennzoil? Well these either use uh, Pennzoil for their genuine uh, engine oil or they are factory filled or they recommend using it. So all Ferraris come from the factory with Pennzoil Platinum. Uh, for BMW and Mini Cooper, Pennzoil supplies their genuine uh, oil for their vehicles. And uh, for the BMW actually they also recommend all the M vehicles recommend using uh, Shell V-Power Nitro Plus. And for the Dodge Charger SRT, all all SRT vehicles are factory filled with Pennzoil Platinum. So just kind of a fun fact there of some different vehicles, which systems they use, and they all actually use Pennzoil Platinum. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.